In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to apply fade ins and fade outs, and there are a number of ways that you can apply these processes. Let's start with a fade in. Now on this particular audio file that I have loaded, you'll notice that there's some dead air at the beginning of the file. Let me show you a little bit more about what I'm talking about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ramp up the vertical zoom so that you can see that dead air. There just really isn't anything going on for the first few seconds of this audio file. And so what happens is as soon as you press play, there's some space in there, probably too much space. So what I'm going to do before I apply the fade in is get rid of just a bit of that dead air and leave a little bit. Now why would I want to leave a little bit of dead air at the beginning? And to do this I'm going to ramp that uh, vertical zoom up a little bit higher. Why would I want to leave a little bit of dead air at the beginning? Well, the most important reason is because I have found a few third-party plugins that don't start processing until a couple of milliseconds after the playback begins or after the rendering begins, and rendering will go over a little bit later. And so it's important to leave a little bit of dead air at the start of the file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag from about this location back to mark this area of the audio file and then I'm going to tap the delete key on my computer keyboard and that's going to get rid of that dead air. So now I'm going to change the zoom level back down to normal and I'm going to begin playback and you'll see that things start a little bit quicker now. That feels about right. But what I want to do is I now want to fade in from the beginning of the song until about the two second mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag from about the two second mark. And I'm going to fine tune that a little bit. So now I have the first two seconds of this audio file selected. And I'm going to show you a number of different ways that you can apply fade-ins. But to make this really obvious, I'm going to change my zoom level so that you can see the fade-in after it occurs. So one of the fastest ways to apply a fade is just called the Easy Fade. And if you go under the Process pull-down menu and select Easy Fade, then that fade will be applied. But you'll notice that you can also type Control or Command and the D key on your computer keyboard. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut method just because it's so much easier. So I'm going to type Control or Command D. And you'll notice that it just does a fast fade. This is a linear fade. It starts from infinity dB and goes all the way up to 0 dB or the established volume of the rest of the file. And it's just a linear fade from start to finish. So nothing really dramatic, it just adds a nice fade in. Let's listen to that fade in. I'm going to double tap 0 on my numeric keypad and then press play. There, now I have a nice, slow, gentle fade in. Now if you execute an easy fade at the beginning of a file, then it will perform a fade in. But if the selection that you have made is at the end of the file, then it will perform a fade out. So that is just one way to very, very quickly put fades at either the beginning for a fade in or the ending for a fade out is to use the easy fade command. But I'm going to type Control or Command Z to undo that fade and let's talk about some of the more exotic ways to do fade ins. Under the process pull down menu I'm going to go to the fade in settings and then let's take a look at some of these fade curves. Now you'll notice that the standard fade in, which is Control or Command F, is a linear fade. It's identical to the easy fade command. But then there are some other curves that you can choose from. And in fact, let me go over some of my favorites. The sinus fade will start very, very quickly and then start to slow down towards the end of the fade. Whereas the square root fade starts very, very fast and then slows down down over time. The sinusoid curve is an S-shaped curve, so it's going to start fairly quickly and then slow down and then get very slow at the top. And then the logarithmic fade happens almost all at once 
but then gets very, very, very slow at the end. And then one of my favorites is the exponential curve, which starts very slowly and then gets kind of fast at the end. And the same is true of the exponential, just more of it. It's going to start very slow and then get very, very, very fast. So let's try a few of these. Let's go with the sinusoid curve and let's take a listen to that. That's a very musical fade. Let's undo and try another one. We'll go back to process and fade in, and let's choose the exponential. Now you'll see that that curve is quite a bit more dramatic. It's going to start very slowly and then get faster as the fade comes in. That's also a very musical fade. And in fact, I like that one so much, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that one. And then let's talk about some fade outs, because fade outs can be a little bit trickier. So I'm going to go to my overview, and I'm going to click and drag from where this file starts to fade out. And then I'm going to change my zoom level back to normal so you can kind of see what's happening. So here's the end of the song. It kind of fades out on its own, but it's very pregnant. It lasts for way too long. Still going. Still going. <laughs> you can see that's just going to be way, way, way too long. So what we want to do is we want to cut some of the excess off of this audio file. So because I've played this before and I kind of know what feels natural, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection from right here to the end of the file, and I'm going to show you a shortcut. If you wanted to select from the cursor to the very end of the file, what you can do is hold down the Shift key and then type the End key on your computer keyboard. And what that does is that makes a selection from the cursor position to the end of the file. So now that I have that region selected, I'm going to type the delete key on my keyboard. And it's important to type the delete key and not the backspace key. And then I'm going to choose a position where I want the fade in to start and end. So I'm going to assume that from about, well, let's take a listen here. There's the end. There's a swoosh of the synths, and so probably right about here is where I want the fade in to start. So now that I have that region selected, let's do an easy fade by typing Control or Command D. That does a linear fade out, and let's take a listen to how that sounds. Okay, very musical, except that it's kind of abrupt at the end, and I'm going to explain why in just a moment, but I'm going to undo the easy fade. Let's try some other ones. Under the process pull-down menu, I can go to fade outs, and what you'll notice is that you have the same sort of curves as the fade in option, except that these are the antithesis of a fade in. These are fade outs. So let's try one of the more musical ones like the exponential fade out. That's one I really, really like. Let's take a listen to that. That sounds really good. It's still a little tiny bit abrupt for my taste at the end of the file. So what I'm going to do is to make it less abrupt, since this fade out is going to take us right to infinity dB, or complete silence, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second or two of dead air at the end of the file. So what I'm going to do is you'll notice that there's this dotted line, this vertical dotted line, and that depicts the very end of this audio file. And what I want to do is extend the playback of this file with a little bit of silence. So I'm going to assume about this much. I'm going to put the cursor just about, well, let's zoom in here and see about how much. The file was ending at about the 5 minute 3 and a half second mark. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my cursor to the about a second after that. So here's the very, very end of the file, but I've moved my cursor over here to about a second later. And then I'm going to go under the Edit pull-down menu and select Silence. 
and that's going to bring up the silence generator. And what I want to do is I want to add true silence. This is all bits off. It's the most silent that a digital signal can be capable of you know, not producing. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the apply button and what's going to happen very quickly and in the background, it's going to move from where that dotted position was and it's going to extend it with dead air at the very end. Now is it really dead air? Is it absolute silence? Well one way to find out would be to change the vertical zoom so that you can see that the dead air is absolute silence and then that exponential fade that we applied is still there from the previous process and now if I zoom back out and listen to that fade in Ah, you just have to love complete silence. So those are the most commonly performed sorts of fade ins and fade outs. There's one more that I want to show you, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control or Command S to save this file. All I've done is change the fade in and fade out, and I really like what we have, and so I'm just going to save it over the previous version, because I really like what we have. But what I'm going to also do is show you how to do a level envelope, and you can do so by making a selection, and then under the Process pull-down menu, you can select Level Envelope, or you can type V on your computer keyboard, and what you get is this dialog box, and what you can do is you can see that there's a depiction of the selection in the display screen and what you can do is this line that has a little yellow dot at the beginning and a little yellow dot at the end this represents the volume level envelope and what you can do is you can add points to this line by double clicking on the line and that allows you to make very very specific sorts of fades so I'm going to drag this fade all the way down to zero but then I can customize exactly how this file fades out and I can really really get in there and make some specific changes to the file so if I hit apply now I have a brand new fade out that I customize the level of so that's the level envelope and sometimes it works really really well especially if you have a busy type of fade out where there's a lot of stuff going on that you might want to fade around but since I'm not going to use that fade out, I'm going to hit Control or Command Z to undo. And now I'm back to my saved version of the audio file with the fade in and fade out that I programmed previously. And now that we know how to apply fade ins and fade outs, let's talk about phase, reverse, and DC offset.